Hey everyone, what's going on? I'm pretty sure this thing's live. This is one of those episodes where we're just going right into it. It is. Yeah. Look, I even got the uh, YouTube notification. Yeah, there we go. All yeah, right. sometimes we're on it and we have our fancy setup going. Sometimes we just need to uh, wing it a little, uh, play it by ear. Mm -hmm. um, and it's mainly because the crew spent a lot of time on a really awesome release this week. Uh, this episode is all about a project that we launched yesterday. Or wait, is that correct? I, I got some some smack talk about not respecting UTC. It's Friday morning here. So it's Phil Wilson to you. When did we launch COVID or fold for COVID? Uh, some sleeps ago. ago. Yesterday, yeah. some sleeps ago. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we're very excited to announce a project called Fold, fold for COVID. Um, but before we do that, let's go through the room and do some uh, intros. We'll start with you, Phil. Uh, Phil, I'm a hardware hacker in residence at Bellina, um, and I've been helping out with the folded for COVID stuff that we could talk about today, and doing some other sort of COVID focused projects. Like what? Oh, we're going straight in. Um, uh, so you can't tease us like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we've got um, there's a long-standing. Um, project that we've got for um, people to build uh, with like a Pi display attached to a Pi and then you use it as a remotely controlled dashboard for putting up web pages and Grafana dashboards and things like that. Ooh, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's been around for a while. Um, and so I was trying to think uh, for people that don't have, so, so for people that have uh, relatives that are locked down in isolation and don't have iPads and mm -hmm. phones and that kind of thing, or don't know how to do Zoom, um, could we make something out of Bellina Dash, the, the dashboard project, uh, to try and make them like a video conferencing tool that we can remotely control? So the idea being that you um, you set it up, put it in their house, it's connected to their TV, put a webcam on it. Hopefully you've got all those bits in a drawer already so you don't have to go and buy stuff. Um, I know buying things is a bit tricky in some places. Um, and then remotely control it so you can sort of drop them into like a Jitsi meeting, something where they don't have to enter, put a name in, have an account, anything like that, um, which Jitsi does really well. Um, and then there you are, they're, they're in their video conference with you um, on the big TV. So that's what I've been doing, um, trying to get it through our pull request process, trying to get my my Git submissions uh, accepted. Uh, I managed to get that done and then starting to write up the blog post for that. Um, and then today, so on, on Fridays in Bellina, we tend to have like um, a Hack Friday, which is a bit of a joke that hardware hackers also have a Hack Friday because we're always hacking. But I did sort of take um, a Hack Friday today and I got one of these, if you've ever seen like this really cool, um, it's a ESP32, but it's like an Atom one, like tiny Pico board. Um, so I was trying to load that with uh, Nano Framework, which is .NET. Uh, but I failed to do that, so I just downloaded it. I just um, flashed it with MicroPython, and then made like I don't really can see. It's like yeah, little, I can see it. Is it reacting little, to the orientation? Yeah, so it's it's running off like the accelerometer and the gyroscope, and then <laughs> each time it bounces off a wall, it changes color. So it's like a little game that I made for my son today. Um, with some code I found and some hacky bits. So that's what I did for today. I was going to try and make it bellinery, um, but I didn't. I, ju I just, just put it a... to make a game put a sticker on it and that counts <laughs> display the logo on the uh display yeah yeah i could have a, like, a, a little very, bouncing uh, bellina logo a very low resolution there we go so that's me so sorry if i put you on the spot there we'll get through your intros yeah. real quick and then that's what it should be like yeah. 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 yeah he just left Whichever us way. hanging there i couldn't help it yeah let's go for it david Hey, I'm David, uh, developer advocate here at Bolina. Um, so I am responsible for community outreach and engagement. And I don't know what I'm going to hack on today. We've got our pal without a buzzer today, Alan Boris. Alan, what you got going on? Hey, everyone. Um, my name's Alan. I'm one of the hardware hackers here at Bolina. Um, working on a lot of projects, but I, I don't have any cool new little device like like Phil had. It stuff's in the mail, so hopefully for next week I'll I'll have something cool like that to show off. But just uh, today, looking forward to following along with the uh, the build. I'm going to uh, use a Jetson Nano. Did you Very order cool. anything recently? Any cool hardware recently? 
Um, I'm looking forward to this uh, HDMI to camera converter. Uh, yes, something that, I can vouch uh, for that. Yeah, it's a really cool item. And it, in, it just the idea of it is kind of hacky. So I, I like Probably you know, fine I like that just on the basis of what it's trying to do, masquerading any HDMI input as a camera going into the Raspberry Pi camera connector and just opens up a world of possibilities of sending any video signal in. So that's neat. Yeah. So, well, so can you hook up like a GoPro to that? Something that isn't necessarily utilized as like a webcam. Yeah, you know? I, I think you could hook up any anything that has an HDMI video output and feed it cool. into a Raspberry Pi for whatever purpose you want to do. So the possibilities are really endless. It's goodness. So what, what are you going to hack first? <laughs> I'm interested. What what are your plans to put into it? Um, I think the, the first thing we're going to look into is just something simple. Maybe uh, we're just trying to transfer the HDMI signal to another Raspberry Pi, you know, start with the basics. But, um, you know, I have, I have some thoughts. We'll have to see what we can do with, with that. Right on. Can't wait. I was trying to find an example of the hardware to show the viewers, but it's lost in my oh. hardware. We'll give you a couple minutes to look because we can introduce uh, <laughs> yeah. a new face, a new voice. We've got Kat in the crew today. Kat, go for it. Hello, hello. I was just looking at our um, balance to see if I should introduce myself it, with a British accent a little more or I should go back to how I am in, in you know, my native hometown. But, you know, I think we have to we have to balance it out. So I have to pretend that I, I, I'm from over here. Uh, no, hi, everyone. I'm I'm Kat, I am the team coordinator. So uh, anything these guys like buying and hacking on that goes through me, I get to check whether what they're hacking on is legit or not. So. <laughs> Q &A. Q &A. And, Q &A. Sweets exactly. and chocolates and things in our packages. Exactly. Snack ops is also something that I've done, but um, in yeah. terms of technical background, it's not been very much, but. Um, yes, it has. <laughs> thanks. Thanks to David and Chris. Um, but I'm pretty sure this should be quite simple. I actually, I've been like, um, I've been on my personal Instagram, I've been like doing all this like promotion for like everyone go fold proteins, but I haven't used this specific application yet. So that's what I'm going to try to do on this pie today. Cool. Yes, snack ops. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's another, yeah, we're, we're, another one of my hashtags. We're going to make it a thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's got to be a thing. It's important. <laughs> Memorizing people's snack preferences matters. Alessandro right. says he's half yes, British. Half, yes, exactly. <laughs> or you're well, half British. If you're Italian, I speak Italian as well, so I can yeah, pretend I'm sure, Italian. He sure is. <laughs> <laughs> and then our half of the gray hat uh, club co-chair, Chris. Gray hats to, uh, represent. Yeah, got to have a hat too. What, what are you up to? I think Chris has basically done nothing all week, hasn't he? As far as I'm aware. No, I, yeah, I've been. I've I've essentially had the week off. So um, yeah, I'm Chris. I'm the lead hardware hacker at Belena. Um, this week we've mostly been working on the project that these guys are going to demo for you in a moment, the fold for COVID one. Um, but I've also got some fun new hardware on my desk, which has arrived today. Um, I've hey. got another Nano Pi, this time with a DAC hat, which I can show you. It's super cool. It's super nice. nice. Oh, focus. This camera just it does it does what it wants. I really anyway. need to order you a, a, a focus card, Chris. I'm actually <laughs> gonna write that down and there order you, you a focus. But anyway, it's like a because we've got the Belena sound which works on the Pi Zero, but I thought this would be a nice new form factor. So I'm gonna 3D print a case and stuff. Um, so there's something like aesthetically pleasing about uh, the the DAC hat size of the jacks compared to like when you're using a Pi Zero. I think Tomas, who's not on the call, he did it for his Melina sound video. And I couldn't stop staring at it. I was editing the video because the it's like the jacks the size of the yeah. board more or less. Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> something like Lego-y about that, you know, like it just looks very <laughs> pleasant. Yeah. Well, you got a tiny computer, I mean. <laughs> um, and anyway, to warm up for printing the case for this, I'm printing the goose from Untitled Goose Game. Um, which is currently printing. I have his. I have his feet done. There's a foot. Nice. Do you have that game, Chris? <laughs> yeah. I might be the only person who has no idea what you're on about. That's it's a wonderful goose game. game. <laughs> yeah, you're just the goose. Like you're literally a goose, and you torment the town. Yeah. I am literally was... the only person who doesn't know what we're on about. 
the yeah. idea is to be like the most annoying horrible goose in existence so you yeah. like trip people up and steal their glasses and tie their shoelaces together and all kinds of stuff it's available <laughs> for like, many uh, platforms yeah i kind of feel like phil you'd be rather good at this i feel like i'm born for this yeah. <laughs> who would vouch for that <laughs> Don't worry, Phil. I have a either. great company called House House and distributed by uh, Portland's own uh, Panic software. Paid for this? Oh, they're based in Portland. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, the distributors are Panic. The developers, I don't know where House House is at, but great game. Definitely a, a, a crowd pleaser. Well, and I'm Andrew Nim, uh, lead content strategist, helping folks create. A uh, bunch of fun web stuff. It was a lot of fun to jam on the Fold for COVID project, which uh, we can now segue into. Uh, so, gentlemen, David and Chris, please tell the world what Fold for COVID is. Sure. I'll let you so, take it away, David. Whenever you're okay. ready. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll grab this one. So, um, if you caught last week's stream, either live or if not, you can go back and watch it as part of the IoT Happy Hour playlist. Um, we upload, of course, all of the um, all of the episodes. Um, we had Sahaj Saroop from Lenaro on as a special guest, and he and I talked through the background of how this all started. Um, I'll just summarize it real quick, which is that you know he and I have a lot of single board computers um scattered around that we wanted to help join the covid protein folding project um, being run by the university of washington's baker lab through their project called rosetta at home and uh after a little bit of initial investigation we realized that rosetta at home only runs on desktops and laptops based on intel or amd chips and we couldn't run it on our Raspberry Pis, our Jetson Nanos, um, Odroids, 96 boards devices, et cetera, et cetera, um, because there was no client for ARM processors. So um, he and I and another member of the community reached out to ARM. Um, they were able to pretty quickly put us in touch with the University of Washington, we gained access to the source code and we ended up um, porting the software. So all said and done, we were able to um, get it up and running and start crunching data and folding protein on our small devices. That was still a fairly technical process though. And you kind of needed to know what you were doing. You needed a little bit of command line magic and you had to have some basic Linux administration skills. Um, from there, however, knowing that Bolina makes it easy to simply download an operating system, flash it to an SD card and run a container on it. Um, I thought, okay, hang on a minute. Let's containerize the whole thing and make it so that you could just push it one step to the device. Um, that absolutely works. We have a GitHub repo for that. But then the rest of the Bolina team said, no, hang on, we can make it even easier. So Chris, if you wanna talk about that next lift, um, I think that's mostly where you come in. Oh, I think you're mute, Chris. Uh oh, we lost him. Amateur. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Amateur hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, as David says, we started by containerizing the application, um, which then makes it easy to push using the Belena flow that everyone's used to if they've built one of our projects. Um, but that requires stuff like installing the CLI tools, um, setting up an account, things like that. So we thought we could take it one step further by. Um, pushing forward a whole load of features that have been on our roadmap for a long time. Um, the first one sort of being the ability, uh, giving the ability for anyone to join an application that someone else has published on the platform without needing an account. Um, so it means you can download an OS image, flash it to your device, and it will automatically join a, an application that's already sitting there with all the code preloaded. So, in that case, we've set up an application, loaded it with all the setup for Rosetta and everything needed to get started crunching straight away. So it means 
to set a device up now, all anyone has to do is download the image from the Fold for COVID website, flash it to the device, and it just it just gets started. You just need to power it on, boot it up, and that's it. Um, the like the idea behind this being that if we can reduce the barrier to entry and hopefully inspire as many people as we can to give it a go, um, hopefully we can make a difference by uh, sort of going at it in huge numbers, even if it's only a small amount of computing power that each one each person is contributing all together, hopefully we can make a difference. Um, and then sort of pushing forward on another aspect is that like we've, we've supported uh, Raspberry Pis and other single board computers for a long time, but what we've tried to do is um, build a, a, a new OS image and a new device type for the platform, which includes a whole load of drivers and modules and stuff. So you can hopefully dig out your old laptop that you've filed away in the cupboard somewhere that's got an old version of Windows on, and you can download our um, flasher image and you can put it on a USB stick, plug it into the laptop and it completely wipes it, installs the software, and again, sets up Rosetta and gets it crunching just just by powering it on, no config needed. Um, but yeah, we've been we've been totally focused on trying to streamline the process and get as many people involved in this as we can. Here I thought you were on vacation this week. I mean, I, I took a vacation. <laughs> I just did that on the side. Like <laughs> his vacation <laughs> was the project. But it's like <laughs> Works seriously, like we've, we've had a, a huge amount of help from the rest of the team at Polano. Everyone's like yeah put in a massive effort to get all these features out um yeah so huge respect to everyone on the team and what they've achieved great to see some folks uh in the chat uh, are stoked to give it a shot this weekend or you can do it right now because yeah. that's what we're all yeah, here right. for yeah uh the group's here to uh follow along as david uh and chris walk us through a demo of what's going on uh while i ask some questions in real time <laughs> yeah so um, you can turn that uh, on right so let me. That, oh, yeah, intern Andy. Yeah, I should change my name. I need to put my intern hat on. Um, yeah, so real quick to really emphasize the point that this is any, you know, a variety of single board devices and or spare laptops. What's everyone going to be adding uh, Fold for COVID onto? Yep, so I'm going to drop into the chat real quick. I... <clears throat> So I'm doing a Jetson Nano. Nano. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I was losing my train of thought there. So I'm doing a Jetson Nano today, as you can see on the desk. Um, Kat, I think you showed a Pi. Alan, I think you have a Jetson. Phil, are you using a Pi? No, I've going... got I've got a laptop from 1974. Oh, you're uh, is it? Is that the one I just saw got stolen from the museum over there? <laughs> You wait till this turns on and then you won't hear me ever again. The fan's super loud. I'm oh. going to do that just, just so that we're not all doing a Jetson Nano. Uh, cool. Yeah, no, that's awesome. All right. And then uh, I see some comments in there. If we can get a couple people to follow along, um, if somebody wants to keep an eye on YouTube uh, chat, that'd be pretty awesome. All right. So first things first, I'm going to, so we can see my target victim here, but if I hit screen share, I assume it's going to maximize the view for everybody. So get ready to uh, resize that back down. <laughs> We're ready for you. Go for it. Get ready. Get ready. All right. Oh, oh. Can we see a Windows? Let's Picture see. of you? No. What's, what's going on there, David? Yeah, please explain. <laughs> <laughs> well, so are we not seeing a Windows machine then? We are. We, we are, are, but something's we're, in front of we're you. We're counter trolling you, mm, David. Good. There we <laughs> Let's go. get going. There it goes. I'm watching YouTube. Sorry. You, you do so make a mean steamed here? ham, though. Yeah, sorry, I was watching YouTube, which delays by 20 seconds, and I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, nope, still me talking. <laughs> All right, so first things first, we have to install Etcher. Well, actually, oh. hold on a oh, minute. Oh, there we hold go. On I see what you're hold doing. on a minute. Hold on a minute. Uh, let's actually go to our brand new website, Fold4 covid.io 
Well, you do that, I'll just reiterate to folks who may maybe have just joined. Uh, we are all going to visit fullforcovid.io, and uh, we're all going to add a device together. So. Yeah, that is not going to work. I have a bit of a, a, a predicament. That is not going to stream. Wow. All right. You know what? Why don't, why don't we Cat, just... I'm going to need a new computer. <laughs> Send you one from 1974, like Phil's. Yeah, you can't have mine. No, there's Dave, some in the office. Don't worry. David can <laughs> lift this. <laughs> I gotta work out in order to I, lift it. I tried this on. Uh, this is not quite from 1974. This is from 2008, and uh, I tried this last night. Worked out really well. It actually picked up the Wi-Fi too. I didn't even. Oh, have awesome! To wow, that excellent. Nice. Is a, Dell Latitude uh, E4200 from around 2008. I mean, that's, that's what the team's been working on to make sure stuff like Wi-Fi and these old things works. These old mm -hmm. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Wi-Fi wi on my one works as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's, mine it's like some half really, works. Mine's some, like some really weird board that um, Windows struggled to install Wi-Fi drivers for, and the Bellina image worked just straight away. Awesome. All right. Well, we are having a Windows failure. Uh, that is. I've downloaded my image. Work. Am I am I winning the race? You're uh, winning the race. You are. When was there a race? Uh, at the Everything's top of the, a race, cat. Yeah. cat. Yeah. Every With time boys, there's a maybe. demo, it's Phil racing. <laughs> so he can proudly say, "I've done it before anyone else." <laughs> it's the small victories in life, cat. That's what keep you going. Fortunately, this project, you know, as Chris and David had explained uh, as to why we were making this super streamlined and easy to use, it's pretty simple, you know. So, so the demo was more to just get everyone together, hang out. Yeah. For everyone on the right. call, feel free to well, you know go about adding your device, and for everyone on the chat and community. So we can, can I can explain. Yeah, yeah. Walk through it. I wanted to show it, but no problem. So what I'm going to do is go to the new website, fold4covid.io. And when it loads, I am seeing how many, 145 computers around the world on the, um, on the Bellina app that awesome. um, are crunching at the moment. So I'm gonna scroll down and there's a section that says get started. And we see, you can choose from boards, laptops and desktop computers or your main computer. I'm going to be deploying to a Jetson Nano. So I'm going to scroll down on your boards to NVIDIA Jetson Nano. You know what? Why don't and I share my screen and I can just yeah, kind of you emulate what you're doing? Yeah, yeah right. Because yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. weird to watch you not <laughs> have a mm. screen. Yeah. <laughs> what well, Jetson go. Nano talk to me? Do we Come see on, the Nano. browser? With there fold? we go. Yep. Yeah, uh, it. looks good. Looking Hi. good. Live troubleshooting. All right. So you are choosing a Jetson Nano. Yep. I am going to then select Ethernet only or Wi-Fi plus Ethernet. I am going to do Wi-Fi, and I'm entering my Wi-Fi. Because you have a dongle, right, on your Jetson Nano? Yes. The okay. Jetson Nano does not have onboard Wi-Fi. Um, it only has Ethernet. But um, I do have a USB Wi-Fi adapter that I'm going to be using. Now, well, quick note here. We are not storing your Wi-Fi credentials. This is a pass-through because the next step here, the next button here is download Bellina OS. The Wi-Fi credentials that you just entered get passed through to our image builder and injected into Bellina OS. So I'll give that a moment to download real quick. Phil, you said yours is already going. Everything's a race. <laughs> yeah. I'm just discovering this. The Pi, the Pi 3 doesn't have Wi-Fi in it. The yeah, just... Pi 3 has Wi-Fi, yes. How come it has this uh, warning sign that says the Raspberry Pi 3 is not capable of connecting unless you use a Wi-Fi adapter? That 
is um, 5G. It will not connect to, or five gigahertz. Um, it'll only operate on a 2.4 gigahertz um, uh, network. Um, we'll have to refine that warning. Yeah. Should I go through Ethernet you'll, instead? Nah, you'll or be all right. I can put in my Wi-Fi credentials and it should work. Yeah. I yeah, thought so. Yeah. I thought it was the two that doesn't have Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, I think right. most yeah, modern right. wireless routers do both bands, assuming you change yours out every five to six years. Or maybe you have that old 20-year-old Linksys that only does two gig. Sorry. We'll see. <laughs> we will find out. No the offense problems. to Linksys. Linksys is great, by the way. Just perhaps Be careful, Andrew. <laughs> when you get your um, Pi 2 mixed up with your Pi 3, and then you spend ages sitting there wondering why it's not connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. That was me yeah. with the Pi 0, remember? <laughs> and you're like, it's going to have a W at the end if it connects. With... Yeah. I was like, you're kidding. <laughs> so if you don't have Etcher yeah. yet, you can download it with this button right here. Yep, next step, we're gonna need to flash this SD card uh, right there. So, um, need a, an imaging application. So, you can download Balena Etcher and go through its installation, only takes a moment, and then launch it. Now, I am gonna do the same over here. This is zooming help. Look at that. I'm zooming in Zoom. You're zooming in Zoom. Yeah, I realized that I, the type was super small. Hmm. <laughs> I see there we go. Done. Now. I'll just hover over this GIF of Chris yeah, yeah, uh, inserting an SD card over and over and over again. That one's not me. I can't take credit for that one. You, oh, yeah, that's not you. You say that, but we all know it's you. I I'll take credit for Chris. the Jetson Nano one. We um, all know. Nico has a question in chat. He's he's asking. Um, I have a somewhat new laptop, but the screen doesn't work. I think it's configured to boot from USB. Will I be able to run the app? And the answer yeah. is yes. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm doing as well. My my screen does work, but it's the same process. So um, instead of an SD card, I've got a little um. USB stick that's plugged into my it's a hub, but um, so Etch is just going to overwrite that USB stick instead of a, an SD card. So as long as your laptop is booting from USB, um, then yeah, you'll be able to do that as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Might want to plug we have to thank our dear friend Rahul. Didn't he uh, push the feature where you can also run it while it's closed? So you can really just like load it up and it could really put it away, hide it yeah, somewhere. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to give props to that guy because he makes my life really hard with pull requests. <laughs> we love you, Raul. <laughs> don't listen to him. Not here to not here to defend himself. <laughs> um, so I, I, I might be able to show my screen just by pointing this massive laptop at the camera at some point, so you yeah, can see what I'm doing when I'm doing mine. The only thing, Chris, um, when I go to flash the laptop with that USB stick, uh, I have to push enter on the flash. I don't know on Grub or does it does it have a timeout so it will just. No, it should have a timeout. Yeah, yeah. Have a timeout. Well, we'll see in a minute. Yeah, good. It'll be a good um, test. Okay, yeah, but so Nicholas, I... you, you should be able to do exactly the same as I'm doing. My download of the OS has completed. Let's get Etcher going. Oh, we're going, are we? You didn't say go. Go. All right. Oh. It's starting to flash. Go. God. Okay. We are flashing. I've sneakily told it not to verify afterwards, just so I win the race. Ah! That's what I do when I want to cheat as well. <laughs> so um, if you want to beat someone, just skip the verification. Yeah. There you go. Uh, okay. Chris, I have a question for you about the, the Nano. Um, is it using the um, GPU, the massive GPU on here, or uh, solely the CPU when we're on this? Yeah, unfortunately, Rosetta is a CPU only project. I think that's right, isn't it, David? It, um, yeah, So that is... we, we're not taking advantage of the GPU on the Jetson Nano, unfortunately. I'm done. Did I win? <laughs> you win, Phil. Yeah, you win. I'm only a 71%. <laughs> yep. So depending on your device, as you boot it up, it might take a couple minutes to uh, load up and connect and whatnot. 
And who would like to talk about the end state here? Like once you know you're connected, you can click, go to uh, this local link to see the status of your machine. You can actually see the number of jobs that you're doing. This is just a screenshot. So this isn't like yeah. live. <laughs> but, um, oh, why don't I become part of the solution and go to the one that I have on? Was it full for COVID local? Which one is it detecting whoa, here? Look at that. That was seamless. There you go. Apart from oh, is that many a, jobs right now. Is that a Pi 3 that you're running? Oops. Yeah, well, I have it. Jets and Nano set up too. But I, my, how do I go to that one? <laughs> In that case, you can probably go to foldforcovid-2.local. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. Hey, doing the work. Yeah. Go, uh, little guy, go. So I plugged mine into my enormous laptop, and then um, it did show the grub menu with Flasher as the only option to choose, and it did time out. And then we've got the Bellina logo on my laptop, but it's still doing something at the moment. So anybody else who's following along with their laptop, it is actually still installing and downloading things in the background. So just leave it on this screen for a bit. Um, and then when it's finished, it will shut down the laptop, and that's that's the next time you need to do something. Yep, spot on. Perfect. All right, mine just finished flashing. Did I win? Never. <sighs> so the race is finished and everyone's gone home, David. <laughs> wonderful. Just wonderful. So if All you right. decide to set up multiple devices, like Chris said, um, you can use that local link and then it, does it just increase by number more or less? Like if you have like four, you can check. Yeah, that's right. One, or like hyphen yeah. one, hyphen, or hyphen yeah. two, hyphen three, hyphen four. Um, and yeah, you can see all the jobs that are assigned to your little device. Um, you can see its progress and whatnot. Uh, and, you know, I think Phil, I think you mentioned at the top or Chris at the top of the, the hour, um, every little job counts, you know, it's like, sure. You have giant beastly companies out there like Amazon donating massive amounts of compute, but it feels kind of good to know that I've got two little Singapore devices on my desk here, just, uh, yeah. helping the university out with their uh, COVID-19 research. All right. So my, so my laptop, um, my laptop's now gone blank. It's turned off, uh, so I can take my USB key out and then turn it on. Um, and then the laptop screen, if yours does work like mine, uh, if it doesn't, like Nicholas, you won't see anything. You just have to wait um, and keep going to that dot local link that Andrew showed earlier um, and wait for it to turn. It does take a few minutes. It, it, on my Jetson Nano, it took about four minutes for that dot local. Um, to resolve to something, but you can see now, hopefully my 1974 screen is booting um, and then I'll get the same kind of uh, output as Andrew just showed on that web link. If you've got a laptop with a working screen, it will, it will show on the laptop. Yeah. So over here on mine, I attached my USB Wi-Fi dongle. I found the very difficult to locate SD card slot. See if I can get this in frame on the Nano. It's right under the heat sink there on the SOM. Get that in, give it some power. And I think an another thing that's worth mentioning, like a feature that we've had on the roadmap for ages that we've pushed through for this is that um, Anyone who's set up a, one of our projects in Berlin Cloud before will know that you flash the OS, um, the device appears in the dashboard, and then it downloads the latest release of your application. But an awesome feature that the team have put together is that um, right now, when you download the image for the Fold for COVID from the Fold for COVID website, it includes the latest release of the application all built in. Um, so it means as soon as you plug the device in, it already has the latest software all there ready to go. There's no uh, extra downloading needed after it boots up for the first time. And will it stay updated, Chris? How does it, um, if you push a new update for that application? Right now we have to, because it's a, a super new feature, we have to manually update it to the latest release. But um, like going forward, when that makes it to production um, in Belena Cloud, it's going to, it will it will automatically preload the latest version of the release for the app. I'll keep the device going while David mm. loads up. Oh, go for it, Alan. No, sorry. I just wanted to, to clarify. So if if uh, there's a new release, will it be pushed automatically to my device? Yes. Or I would yeah. have to reflash 
Don't no, have you to. would also once you're um, up and running, you'll also get the new releases whenever they're pushed as well. Great, thanks. Um, but the the preloading is a super nice feature for the slower devices like the Pi Zero because they can be they can take a long time to download the all the Docker containers depending on how big your application is. But the preload step means that you're downloading it on your desktop and flashing it as part of the initial SD card image, so it's circumventing a lot of that download. And then of course after that you get Delta downloads which are a lot smaller. And right on, got a question from Twitter for. Uh, let's go with Chris since David's. Uh, looks like you're troubleshooting. You can turn off share screen until you get your. Yeah, team still not. Takes a moment to get going. Um, Chris, uh, does this project work with uh, the folding at home initiative? No. So the, as far as I'm aware, the folding at home guys don't yet have a client that works on ARM devices. Um, so we've focused our efforts on Rosetta because that means we can support all the single board, uh, single board computers That's... we support as well. Yeah, that is correct. Um, there is some work by that team. Um, I think they um, are also looking at it, um, but they're not there quite yet. From the chat, we've got one. Uh, does the OS image work with i586? I have a i586 compatible CPU. Yeah, that's the uh, hush. He's got some retro computers there. Um, yeah. I am How not old laptop sure. or computer are we yeah. we should define. <laughs> <laughs> that one, Chris, help me out here. It, it does need Docker to be a 64 file. bit yeah. CPU. Like, I dug out an old netbook that I found. Um, which had an Intel Atom, but it was one of the older Atoms before they went 64-bit, and the um, it doesn't work on that because yes. uh, Blin OS is a 64-bit OS. Was that like Intel with the Intel Jingle era Intel device? <laughs> do, do they ever drop? They they still do the jingle, don't they? Yeah, but it's not as pronounced. You know, like they used to like... dominate. They used to dominate yeah. their advertising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my um, my laptop now is showing that. The same display. All right. We've added single board devices. We've added a laptop. We, we, we've lived the fold for COVID dream. Mm -hmm. the, Phil, they're asking in chat what the spec well. of your uh, beast is there. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's an i7. It's an Intel i7. I don't know how old it is. I've lost, you know, it's probably 10 years old, probably something like that, really. Let's see. Oh, we've got a we've got a meta level question here. What is resin? That's a great question. That's actually uh, what Blaine it was Blaine's former entity, right? And then yes. at some point yeah, along the right. line, vintage, they rebranded. Vintage Belina. Vintage Belina. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Old yeah, so we're all the same. We're all the same group. <laughs> so so yeah. my my Pi is on now. My Pi three, okay. and so I've put on a Pi four in the past, but then I used the CLI to, you know, Belina push. So. Can you guys kind of explain what the difference with this and my other Pi 4 running is like? I understand that it's open app, so we're just adding on to someone else's app. Where is, where is this app hosted and everything? Um, I guess, so both the devices will be ultimately running the same software, but the yeah. difference is when you do it via Belena Push, you're, you had to go through the steps of creating a Belena Cloud account and setting up an application. Yeah installing mm -hmm. the CLI yeah. and going through all that process, this which is fine if you're, it, yeah. if you're the more advanced user and you want to make some changes to the code um, or push some additional containers, make your device do more than one thing, that sort of thing. Um, but for this project, we've streamlined that whole process. So by default, you're being, your device is being added to that same app and running that same code base. So yeah. it's, it's cutting out all those extra steps. And is it on like, your Belena Cloud account with the app, or it's on a it's on the Belena Labs Belena Cloud account. So we have okay. one account that's got open apps in it, and so everyone ends up joining that same application, um, and that's running the code which is on the GitHub repo for the project. And is that one pushing code to like this device right now, or yes? Okay, that's awesome. And even so though we're all technically part of one massive fleet, like every device is uniquely keyed. Like you'll never know, you'll never yeah, be able yeah. to like see or tell like 
any of Chris's advice from mine or whatever. No. Yeah. That's super. And is there like a limit to how many apps we can add to? I mean, how many devices we can add to one app? Nope. You can add as many as you want. Like the more, the better. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, Chris someone from chat through. brought up something. Uh, hmm. For Blana users out there, when you succeed in pushing, you typically see Charlie, the unicorn. You actually yes, won't see it Charlie. at the end of this process. Sorry. No, Instead, no you're helping. Charlie. You're helping a bigger cause. Yep. Uh, so no unicorn here, but uh, you'll be crunching uh, protein folding simulations to, to research COVID-19 treatment. Charlie is always my favorite. Yeah. If, you're desperate Charlie to see the, if you're desperate to see the unicorn, you can still just use the GitHub repo and, and oh. still do your Bellina push. And... Yeah, you could That's do true. The, the version we talked about last week, yeah. Mm -hmm. You could do the Git clone and then Bellina push and you'll see Charlie. You're going to end up in essentially the same situation of, you know, joining I mean, the we don't, we don't have a preference whether people use the normal route or use the open app. Uh, the, the point of the open app is just to try and reduce the barrier down to almost nothing so that we can get as many devices connected and healthy exactly. as we can. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And if the six of us can fumble our way through adding all of our disparate devices, you all can do it magically. I'm pretty sure. How many Definitely devices so. have you got folding proteins, Chris? I think I'm up to like 17, maybe. Oh my gosh. I can Are see at least, again? there's at least oh, many four on the desk in front of me. <laughs> you actually, let me think. You've got a few more than me. I think I have 12 scattered around the house. I have to hide them in like kind of um, non, you know, in kind of like discreet locations so that my wife doesn't catch on. Um, <laughs> so I can't that just you're leave. spying on her? Uh, well, no, You'd not be like, spy. oh, they're these, are, these are crunching no, proteins, gets, but they're well, like they actually. Are. That's, it's, that's valid and legitimate. <laughs> but, you know, she gets upset if I have too many random single board computers just like kind of around the house so i kind of have to hide them and tuck them away and sneak them um, i know it's, like I know it's a habit you've got david or something. yeah 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 <laughs> so i think i have about a dozen around hidden we've got a great question from the chat uh is there a way to piggyback on existing devices versus re replacing the whole os and the answer is yes yeah. There's a third option uh, if you go to the foldforcovid.io page uh, to install it just on your existing machine. <clears throat> yeah, it um, looks like. Hey, we've got, got someone with one active yeah, task. Yeah, we got an active Congrats. task. All right. There's some awesome. protein awesome. getting folded. Chris, putting you on the spot. If somebody had, um, if they've only got like a Raspberry Pi 4, they've only got one, say, but they, they still want to to help out. Could they add it as like an extra container in a multi-container app? Yeah, for sure. But although it's a bit more, they wouldn't be able to use the flow that we've set up to make everything streamlined. Um, but I'm guessing if they know enough that they want to add it as an extra container alongside an existing one, they're probably familiar with the standard Bolina cloud flow anyway. Um, but it would be a case of cloning the repo, which is linked from the website, and you could merge your two compose files for your two applications add the containers from our Rosetta application um, repo and put those alongside your existing containers. And yeah, absolutely. I'm hoping Andrew's hurriedly trying to find the link to the blog post about making multi-container apps. <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. The, um, that's true. the Raspberry Pi multi-tool one would be a good one. Yeah, that's what I'm totally furiously typing about. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> While so I do that, I um, actually page. want to ask. I want to see how oh. many we got. Did we yeah. get 150? We're at 149. OK, Wait. we need one more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, while I find that blog post about multi, uh, multi projects on a single board, um, we've got one more Twitter question here. Uh, Belena, are you all part of Hackster's COVID-19 Detect and Protect Challenge? Uh, so I can answer that one. And the answer is yes. Just yesterday, or was it Wednesday evening, um, we were able to join in. And, um, and yeah, we are participating. Um, I don't know quite yet how they're, um, how they're going to uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, as you do your submission, they um, go through a process of vetting the 
applications that come in, the users are going to submit their, um, you know, their proposals. And then at the end of the contest that they are running, they're going to choose winners. Um, and so I don't know exactly what that process looks like yet, but the point is this, there's prize money available. If you can develop, um, a project that helps in the detection and prevention of COVID, um, by all means, get submitted. We are participating. I'm going to try to get on the judges panel. We'll see if that works or not. Um, but yeah, I think the prize is like 1500 bucks, if I remember correctly. And um, I don't know how many winners are being selected. But yeah, if you've got any citizen science or home hacks, um, of course, you know, via social media, I've seen people doing 3D printing, personal protective equipment, I've seen the, um, the ventilator stuff. So, you know, if you can come up with some creative projects that help detect and prevent, by all means, get your submissions in, we are participating. That's awesome. So with that, uh... I think uh, everyone's out of their devices. Hopefully folks on the chat and in the community can do so with the instructions provided. Uh, the site's pretty uh, robust. We just all wanted to get mm -hmm. together and do it uh, as a team here. Um, and with that, if you have any more questions, we do have a forum uh, category kicked up, correct? For yep. this Fold for COVID uh, yep. project. So feel free to visit, uh, drop us a line. If you have any troubles or whatnot, uh, feel free to, to chime in, ask questions. Uh, the crew is there to help. Um, and also, like always, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't. Spread word about the project. Yeah. Uh, hashtag join the fold if you'd like. Uh, I think we're trying to make that a thing. It's pretty cute, pretty cool. We're totally making that a thing. Oh, we'll definitely uh, make that. That and thing. hashtag snack ops to go back to the top of the episode. That's yep. also important. But yeah, join the fold. Spread the word. As always, we are so thankful that you all uh, take the time to mm -hmm. uh, visit us, hang out for about an hour or so on IoT Happy Hour. And uh, David, what's up next? Um, next week, uh, I know that Anu uh, Anuj is watching. Um, we were going to do this week a uh, overview of the Bellina Fin, but with this project launching, I wanted to make sure we devoted some time to this. Um, so I've pushed back um, Bellina Fin, but we're going to do some uh, some hardware dissection and uh, kind of show Bellina off. A uh, Bellina Fin is a custom built carrier board for a Raspberry Pi 3 compute module. So that is a Bellina, that is a Bellina <laughs> manufactured <laughs> device. Um, oh, we've cheesy. done all the, all the hardware design and um, PCB production. So that is a Bellina branded, Bellina produced um, Pi 3. Where can I get one? <laughs> <laughs> well, on the Bellina website, of course, where else? Um, so yeah, we're gonna uh, do an overview of the Bolina Fin. That should be uh, pretty interesting as well. There's some cool features on that that um, a standard issue Raspberry Pi does not have. So yeah, we'll take your questions apart. too. This isn't yep. like a product demo or anything. We mm -hmm. want to just yep. give you a look under the hood, you know, yep. and invite the community to just really ask us the hard questions. Why are we doing it? What's it all about? What makes it different? I'm uh, excited to watch Alan's live build of his HDMI gadgety thing that I didn't understand. That's yeah, what I'm that'll be look forward to for next week. Oh, Alan tricked me. I thought you were frozen, like your connection like gave out. He always but... says like that. <laughs> if only there was some kind of button we could push to make a buzzer go off in Alan's office. Scare him. Uh, I'm so yeah. sorry the buzzer's not here this week. I placed it elsewhere. <laughs> Convenient. That, that's what's really going to draw folks to episode mm -hmm. six, not the fin, but oh, Alan's bringing the buzzer back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be here. <laughs> I hope, it's, a, I hope it's a connected public URL live build of something <laughs> HDMI. This is going to rock. Oh, yes. man. This is something Zoom. interesting. Manipulate the HDMI signal. You want to really go off the rails with that. <laughs> it's the Zoom bombing right. at a whole new level. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Please have a great mm, weekend. Yep. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Bye. Thanks, guys. Right. Thanks See for you. having Bye, guys. me. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah, thanks.